the 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 function yeah the function of membrane proteins for the last lecture okay so you have to know that um for membrane proteins uh proteins that are embedded in the plasma membrane and also proteins that are found attached to the plasma membrane facing uh the cytoplasm they have uh several function to be specific they have uh, six function of which you have to know for each one okay so just to recap uh, the the protein can function as enzymes. Okay, uh, they they function to uh, give support to the membrane by attaching to the ECM and also to the cytoskeleton. So uh, the protein attach uh, to the ECM that is located okay um, outside of the cell. Uh, the protein also attached to the cytoskeleton, which is uh, inside of the cell facing the cytoplasm. And then the other function of the protein is to function as a transport protein. So you have to know that there's uh, two types of transport protein, which are um, carrier protein. So carrier protein can involve in both active and passive transport, where uh, the solute that the protein going to transfer uh, will have binding site for the solute. Okay, so the solute will bind to the to the protein and uh, the protein will change shape to cause the solute to be transferred across the cell so either into the cell or out of the cell so the this protein can be involved in both active and also passive transport the other protein is we call it as channel protein such as um, uh, aquaporin okay so this will transport uh, protein using um, uh, down concentration gradient of which we are going to look at uh, after this. Okay, down concentration gradient for passive transport. Okay, so it's like just aquaporins that specifically uh, transport uh, water molecule across cell. Okay, so every transport protein will have their own specific solute uh, for which they are going to uh, transport. Okay, across the plasma membrane. So. Uh, so the third function is to function as transport protein. And then uh, the other one is uh, the protein involved in signal transduction. So for this type of protein, they have um, binding site. Okay, they have binding site. Um, they have binding site for signaling molecules. Okay, we call it, we call it, we can call it as signaling molecules or uh, hormones. Okay, uh, so hormones. That, that is made up of protein. So uh, for this type of hormone or signaling molecule, they uh, they will instruct cell to do uh, some kind of work, okay, some mechanism, okay, uh, to activate some uh, some metabolic pathway. Uh, so in order for this uh, hormone to to uh, to instruct cell to do this kind of work, okay, they have to bind to uh, this transport protein to, uh, sorry. To, to this kind of protein, okay, uh, protein that involves in signal transaction. So once this uh, molecule binds to the uh, protein, it causes the protein to change shape and release information, okay, release information into the cell. We call it as signal transduction, okay, signal transduction. And then the fifth one, it functions as what? Can you all uh, remember? Ada dua. Melibatkan satu, melibatkan glycoprotein. Okay, cell-cell recognition. Okay, so um, the fifth one is the protein can function as, uh, it function in, okay, function in cell-cell recognition. So uh, this involves um, the glycoprotein. So as you know, glycoprotein um, uh, is, the, is the combination of uh, the membrane protein bound to short chain, sh short chain, short chain of polysaccharide okay so this extension of polysaccharide that is attached to the uh, protein will um will face outside of the cell okay so like i said before they can function as antigen okay antigen for the cell or cell marker okay so to to identify um this group of cell uh, belongs together to form tissue for example okay huh? uh, and then um the other one is uh, the last one involved in um, uh, cell joining, joining cells together. Okay, so it's joining cells together, such as uh, protein that involved in the formation of uh, tight junction. Okay, so this uh, this protein is to attach cell together to form tissues. Okay, uh, that is um, cell cell recognition to to recognize or oh, this cell, this group of cells are 
of the same type they belong together they uh, to form functional tissues okay tapi yang lagi satu uh, is um, uh, joining to, to join cell protein that is to join cells together so this is to attach cells together to form the tissue okay such as uh, such as tight junction okay so tight junction uh, uh, to attach cell together to prevent uh, extracellular fluid from getting in between the cell okay so cell tu tak adalah uh, floating or pecah-pecah whatever so they are they are attached together by this uh, tight junction or uh, gap junction for example okay or uh, desmosomes okay so so this uh, so these are the six six uh, function of protein that you have to know okay huh? so you have to know the six the six roles of membrane proteins okay so membrane proteins uh, you have to also remember that there is two type you have the integral protein and also you have the uh, peripheral protein okay so peripheral protein is not embedded okay it is attached to the uh, plasma membrane facing the cytoplasm right okay so uh, enough with the recap so saya recap tu supaya awak boleh recall balik apa yang kita dah belajar minggu lepas. Okay, so for this uh, lecture, uh, today's lecture, we are going to look at the next uh, subtopic, which is 3.4, uh, membrane structure results in selective permeability. Okay, so uh, just, okay, just wait a moment, All right. Okay, so um, number one, here it says, uh, hydrophobic, okay, Okay, hydrophobic uh, which is non-polar molecules such as hydrocarbons, okay. so hydrocarbons such as uh, it can be uh, steroids, okay. steroids molecule, uh, hormones that is made up of steroids, uh, testosterone, progesterone, okay, so these are groups as uh, hydrocarbons uh, and then you have uh, carbon dioxide uh, and ox uh, oxygen, these are um, respiratory gases, okay, which can dissolve easily, right, across the phospholipid bilayer and pass through the membrane rapidly. Obviously, uh, these two carbon dioxide and oxygen does not require a uh, transport protein to pass through the membrane. It will take a long time for this, uh, for this gas to, to diffuse across the membrane. So they just uh, can diffuse across the membrane due to their small size, okay. So they uh, so these uh, this type of molecules uh, can easily pass through the membrane. Okay, non-polar molecules. Syarat dia mesti non-polar or hydrophobic because the membrane is made up of what phospholipid bilayer. Okay, so maksudnya uh, hormon walaupun molecule dia agak besar yang uh, yang diperbuat daripada steroid boleh masuk ke dalam sel. So tadi saya mention eh so Hormone basically, for hormone we are going to look at in detail the mechanism, okay, the different types it, during semester two. But just uh, for you to know that hormones, there are two types based on uh, their composition, which is the, uh, the, the hormone that is made up of steroid and the hormone that is made up of protein. Hormone that is made up of steroid can diffuse across the membrane and enter into the cell to instruct cell to do uh, some kind of metabolic pathway, specific metabolic pathway instructed by the hormone. Okay, so they can pergi, so for this type of hormones, they can go into the, they can pass through the plasma membrane, diffuse across the plasma membrane, enter into the cytoplasm, and then they will uh, cross the membrane of the nucleus and go straight into the uh, DNA within that cell. Okay, so so for this type of hormone, the function of this hormone is to activate certain gene inside cell to for gene for this gene to be activated to produce certain uh, certain other proteins. Okay, so uh, for the hormone that is made up of uh, proteins, they cannot diffuse across the plasma membrane. Uh, itu aku tahu. They cannot uh, diffuse across the plasma membrane. Uh, one is due to their large size and second, they are not hydrophobic molecules. Okay. Kita belajar hari tu masa uh, chapter uh, protein kan? Protein uh, that uh, that will form uh, hormone, for example, they are globular proteins. Okay, so globular proteins means that they dissolve 
in uh, in water okay so means it means that for this hormone they are soluble they are um, polar molecules okay so hormones that is made up of protein cannot enter into the cell but instead they will bind to the membrane protein okay only hormone that is made up of hydrocarbons they write second okay hydrophilic uh, molecules including ions and polar molecules such as glucose do not cross the membrane easily because of the hydrophobic core of the membrane okay so so as you know the membrane consists of phospholipid phospholipid bilayer okay so hydrophobic core okay uh, this this are the region uh, of the membrane where uh, the phospho sorry where the tails are are are, are connected to one another okay through hydrophobic interaction so imagine the the structure of uh, phospholipid can so they form by layer so yang tengah-tengah tu the the interaction between hydrophobic tail of the phospholipid uh, by uh, by layer okay of the membrane so this is we call it as the hydrophobic core if we have the structure of the membrane here okay yang ni bagian sini kan so this is the hydrophobic core all right the hydrophobic core of a membrane okay so that's why uh, polar molecules cannot pass through the membrane due to this hydrophobic core okay okay so protein built into the membrane play key roles in regulating uh, the transport of these molecules okay um so if you uh, if you look at this structure the structure of a of a phos uh, phospholipid bilayer okay phospholipid bilayer can form the membrane of the plasma membrane and it can also form the membrane of organelles okay so membrane uh, of the nucleus membrane of the mitochondria membrane of the chloroplast okay membrane of organelle basically are also made up made up of um, phospholipid bilayer okay all the membranes in cells okay, are made up of phospholipid bilayer you have the hydrophobic uh, hydrophobic uh, region here which is the hydrophobic core made up of the tails of the phospholipid molecules so facing outside you have the hy uh, hydrophilic uh, heads okay so you have uh, for if this one okay is the membrane of the plasma membrane so outside you have the extracellular fluid and in, uh, and inside you have the cytoplasm okay so i'm not sure uh, kumpulan mana tanya ada yang tanya saya tak sempat nak reply saya ni uh, so more sibuk <laughs> okay so um apa number uh out kalau apa what is the difference between cytoplasm and cytosol cytoplasm uh, is the combination of the fluid inside cell or the component within the cell uh, uh, the fluid uh, the aqueous environment okay and also all the organelles all the enzyme uh, molecules inside cell are considered as the cy cytoplasm but uh, cytosol dia punya fluid saja okay the fluid uh, only right so um okay so for hydrophobic molecules okay uh hydrophobic molecules and also oxygen molecule carbon dioxide uh, nitrogen uh, molecules okay uh, they can easily pass through the uh, plasma membrane uh, due to uh, for this for this molecule due to their small size okay but for hydrophobic molecule because they are made up of hydrocarbons okay that can easily pass through the hydrophobic core of the membrane and then uh, this uh, for ions okay ions such as chloride ions uh, potassium uh, sodium okay they can they cannot they cannot pass through the membrane easily so in order uh, to transport this ion across the membrane and also um, small uncharged polar molecules such as water ethanol they they have to be um uh they have they they move across the membrane using uh transport protein okay and also large uncharged polar molecules such as sucrose and uh glucose okay sucrose glucose are uh, the fuel for cells so uh, so that the cell can um undergo cellular respiration so cell have to take up this glucose but in order for cell to take up this glucose glucose has to enter uh, the cell using transport protein okay so for all these molecules 
ions, okay, small uncharged molecule, large uncharged polar molecules, they have to have their own specific transport protein. Mesti ada uh, transport protein yang specific untuk water. Mesti ada uh, specific transport protein, protein for glucose, for sucrose, for ethanol to transport all these uh, molecule, uh, solutes across the across the cell. For water, basically, okay, water is a uh, is a special case. Water can okay can diffuse across the plasma membrane, but the diffusion of water is really slow. Okay, it's really slow. So for living cells, uh, for living cell, especially for animal cell, they have to um, they have to take take up water molecule to keep the the cell hydrate and also the water molecule can function can involve in um uh, in reaction within cell so water has to be consi consistently uh, transported across across the membrane at high rate okay so for for cells such as uh, cells in the Okay, for cells, okay, for animal cells, in order to increase, okay, increase the diffusion of water across the membrane. So, water will have their own specific transport protein we uh, known as the channel, the, sorry, the aquaporins, okay, which is a type of channel protein, okay. So, water special, they boleh dua-dua. They boleh uh, diffuse across the membrane but at very slow rate. Uh, so, to increase the rate, they, they use um aqua aqua uh, aquaporins okay okay so uh transport protein okay so the presence of transport protein will contribute uh, contribute to the um uh to the properties of the membrane which is the membrane is selective okay selective so uh, transport proteins allow passage of hydrophilic substances across the membrane such as study uh, water molecules okay so some transport protein called channel proteins have a hydrophilic channel this channel here okay that certain molecules or ion can use as a tunnel all right so channel proteins called aquaporins facilitate the passage of water Okay, so ion lain tak boleh lah kan kalau tiba-tiba uh, potassium nak masuk uh, sel guna aquaporin tak boleh. Okay, so every solute will have their own uh, channel protein or transport protein uh, to allow the passage of this um, solute across the membrane. Okay, so other proteins, uh, other transport protein called carrier proteins bind to molecules and change shape. Yeah, so ini awak kena highlight. This one um, is one of the keyword that is crucial if uh, and uh, if question ask you on uh, on for example to explain how how a carrier protein function or whatever. Okay, so when you are explaining on carrier protein, you must mention the first keyword is that uh, the protein will have binding site. Okay, binding site for the solute it it's going to transfer. Okay, so once the solute has bind to the binding site, it causes the protein to change shape. So this is the feature for carrier protein. They are the binding site. Uh, bila solute dah bind, dia akan berubah bentuk. Okay, so to shatter them across the membrane. So a membrane uh, protein is specific. Uh, this one also you have to highlight. Okay, so uh, each transport protein is specific for the substance or for the solute it's going to um, move across the across the membrane. So move across the membrane. Saya mention secara general sebab apa? The the solute can uh, can uh, can use this transport protein to move in into uh, uh, into the cell or to move out uh, out of the cell. Okay, to move ni boleh ke dua-dua arah keluar ataupun masuk ke dalam cell. Okay, so from this illustration here, as you see, uh, it illustrates uh, the two type of transport. Uh, that occurs across the membrane, which is the first one you have uh, passive transport, second you have active transport. So what uh, what is the general rules for passive transport? It involves the movement of solute from high concentration to low concentration. Okay, so for active transport, it involves the movement of solute from uh, low concentration. Can low, tengok kat, uh, kat dalam ni, uh, yang solute, the, the circle solute, uh, they have only three. Okay, which uh, the circle solute will move out of the uh, cell into a higher 
region into a region that have a higher concentration of the circle solute here. Okay, and vice versa lah for for the solute it, that is uh, the the diamond shape here. Okay, so it moves from uh, low concentration to high concentration using energy usually okay usually in the form of uh, ATP. Okay, so pergerakan uh, Pergerakan solute menggunakan active transport selalunya menggunakan tenaga daripada ATP. Okay, usually it uses energy from from ATP. But there are some um, some other example, okay, which involve the movement of solute using energy from other sources. Okay, and then we will see later. Uh, later, okay. So uh, the process does not require direct energy from ATP. Okay. But indirectly, it uses it uses indirectly it uses energy uh, from ATP. Okay, so for passive transport, okay, uh, for molecules, okay, such as hydrophobic molecules or small molecules such as oxygen, such as uh, carbon dioxide molecules, can easily diffuse across the membrane. Okay, because due to their small size, because for hydro uh, hydrophobic molecules, they can dissolve. Okay, they can dissolve across the uh, membrane for hydrophobic molecules such as steroids. Okay, they can dissolve across the membrane due to the hydrophobic core. And then, uh, so this is known as diffusion uh, without the help of transport protein. But another type, we call it as the facilitated diffusion. Uh, the, uh, in this case, the movement of solute from high to low concentration requires these two type of protein, which is channel protein and also carrier protein. So this one, imagine this is uh, water molecule that move across the channel protein aquaporin into the cell, for example. Okay. And then for this one here, you have um, uh, carrier protein, okay, that has binding site specific for this uh, solute, okay. So, for example, you can have the solute outside here is glucose. So, your uh, your body fluid, okay, will have um, uh, a high concentration of glucose. For example, after you have eaten a bowl of rice, a plate of rice, okay. So, your body will digest uh, the rice uh, into its monomer, which is glucose. So, now your body has absorbed the glucose and causes the glucose uh, to be high in your blood. And, the, and now the cell will take up the glucose, okay, will take up the glucose. So, in order for this glucose to enter into the cell, the glucose has to bind to this, uh, to this carrier uh, protein. Contoh, for example, eh, ha, so... Glucose lah. Saya bagi contoh glucose je lah. Okay. Tapi sebenarnya uh, rewind balik. <laughs> rewind balik glucose ni uh, dia melibatkan active transport actually. Kan. Uh, dia uh, dia adalah dia terlibat dalam sejenis transport. We call it as co-transport. Okay. Co-transport. Um, saya tak boleh nak fikir sekarang ni. Contoh untuk uh, carrier protein yang melibatkan passive transport Contoh specific molecules. Okay, contoh specific ions. So far saya tak boleh nak fikir tapi um, Okay, tapi kalau untuk carrier protein boleh terlibat dalam dua-dua. Tengok eh, carrier protein. So this is one carrier protein. This is another carrier protein. So this carrier protein can uh, can involve in the transport of uh, solute across cell both in passive transport and also active transport. Um, okay. Okay, so, faham eh? Ada, so far, do you have any question? No? Tak hmm. ya. Yeah. Alright. So, uh, yeah. So, glucose tadi, glucose tadi, awak erase balik memory, dia menggunakan um, active transport. Okay, uh, active transport yang melibatkan carrier protein. Alright. Okay, so uh, for the next sub, uh, subtopic, okay, so now we are going to look at uh, specifically into each of these uh, transport. Okay, the first one is passive transport. Okay, so for the first type of passive transport is simple diffusion and later uh, for 3.52 is uh, facilitated diffusion. Okay, um, so, uh, uh, simple diffusion types of passive transport 
uh, we have, okay, the first one, I'll letak kat sini kan. Number one, or label sini, so that it is clear for you. Number one for the first type of passive transport is simple diffusion such as osmosis. Okay, so osmosis involve the movement of water molecules across cell using aquaporin from high concentration from high, for, sorry, from high water concentration, from high water uh, apa, amount of water region, okay, to low amount of water region lah kan. Tapi tu, kalau kita nak consider sebagai region tu uh, in terms of solute, kan, from low solute concentration to high solute concentration lah. Uh, so itu kita akan tengok uh, kenapa macam tu, right? So basically, uh, osmosis, it involves the movement of water molecules, okay, using channel uh, channel protein, aquaporins, okay. Uh, the second uh, the second type of uh, passive transport is facilitated diffusion, okay. So this involves both channel, channel protein and also uh, carrier protein, all right. Okay, so simple diffusion, molecules has a tendency to spread out. Okay, uh, think for the, uh, the detailed explanation for simple diffusion. So molecule has tendency to spread out evenly into available into the available space. So each molecule moves uh, randomly, but diffusion of a population of molecule may be directional. Okay, for diffusion, pergerakan molecule tu boleh bergerak secara random. Okay, secara random tapi directed. Uh, faham eh? Dia boleh uh, dia boleh bergerak secara random tapi directed. Directed tu sebab apa pergerakan molekul tu bergerak daripada high concentration to low concentration. Okay. So at dynamic equilibrium uh, as many molecule across the membrane in one direction as in the other. So then dynamic equilibrium is when the two region, the two region has the same solute concentration and when the two region has reached dynamic equilibrium the movement of the solute will be the same in both direction so net uh, net movement will be zero lah kan okay so uh in this diagram you have the these three these three figures it shows you the movement of of uh, of solute okay of what water of solute okay of solute so molecules of dye Okay, molecules of dye. So, uh, for each uh, box here, okay, it uh, it separates uh, two region okay, by 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 a membrane. Okay, so this is a membrane. Imagine this is a membrane that separate the region in, uh, into two region. Okay, region A, for example, region B, region A, region B, region A, region B. Okay, so the the first region here, okay, region A, is really concentrated with the solute. Okay, with the mole, uh, with the dye molecule here. Okay, so the movement will be um, the movement of the solute will be random, by but directed. Okay, but the movement is directed. Uh, it, uh, the movement directed means that it moves from high to low concentration, but the movement of the solute is random. Akan dia boleh bergerak ke atas, pergi ke bawah, pergi ke sebelah, dia boleh pergi ke bawah, uh, ke bawah sini, pergi untuk masuk ke region yang lebih uh, lebih uh, dilute lah kan. Okay, from high concentration to low concentration. Okay, so um, so the 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 solute will keep on move uh, will keep keep on moving to the region that is uh, uh, less concentrated until equilibrium is reached. Okay, so when equilibrium is reached, the movement of solute will be uh, the same in both direction. Okay, so it says here the the molecules if you uh, diffuses from where it is more concentrated here the region a for example to where it is less concentrated uh, concentrated region region b so this is what we call it as diffuse across its concentration gradient it's is referring to the solute okay the molecules the solute so the solute will move down its uh, concentration gradient okay so this leads to a uh, to dynamic equilibrium Okay, this one here. So the, the solute uh, molecules continue to cross the membrane but at equal rates in both direction. Okay, uh, equal rate in both directions. So you have to highlight this one lah. Okay. Okay, so uh, this one, the first example involves the movement of 
one type of solute across a membrane, okay, the, between these two regions. The, the next example involves the movement of two different solute across a membrane into these two different regions, okay. So, uh, it says here, each type of molecule diffuses down its concentration gradient. So, the orange molecule will diffuse from region A to region B. Okay. So, the movement is random but is directed. Okay. The movement of the solute directed is directed. Same goes to the purple solute. Okay. It moves from low concentration to high concentration. So, for, uh, kita cakap dia apa tadi? Move down con uh, concentration gradient. Okay, so the, the movement uh, will be random but directed from high to low, from uh, from high to low, okay, until uh, equilibrium is reached for both of these solutes, okay, for both of these solute. So there will be a net diffusion of the purple molecule towards the left, okay, from right to left, so, okay, even though the total solute concentration was initially greater on the left side, okay, so initially, Region A, the the solute, the orange solute, the concentration of orange solute is higher. Okay, it's higher compared to the concentration of the purple solute which is, kalau kita tengok bilangan dia, rendah. Okay. So, secara logiknya, kawasan kawasan uh, kiri ni, sorry, uh, kiri, kiri, lebih pekat lah. Okay. Because you have more of the orange solute but because in this case, it involves two different solute, both solute will move, okay, across the membrane down their own uh, concentration gradient. Kan, dia tak bergantung, dia tak, dia bukan, um, dia independent lah maksudnya, pergerakan solute ni independent of each other. Dia akan bergerak according to, to their own solute concentration, okay, from high to low, from high uh, orange solute concentration, Okay, until it moves to region B, until the uh, until equilibrium is reached for solute orange. S same goes to the purple solute, they can move from right to left until equilibrium is reached for the purple solute. Okay, so pergerakan dia sama. Okay, until both solute reach equilibrium for their own uh, concentration. Okay. Okay, so a simple rule of diffusion. So in the absence of other forces, a substance will diffuse from where it is more concentrated to where it is less concentrated. Okay, more concentrated to less concentrated. Okay, more concentrated for purple to less region. Okay, for the uh, concentration of the purple solute. Okay, more concentrated to less concentrated. We call it as down concentration gradient. Okay which is a substance will move down concentration gradient, the region along which the density of a chemical substance decreases, okay? So in this case, uh, no energy is required, okay? So the process is a, spon a spontaneous process, okay? So yang ni awak dah, sebenarnya awak dah lagi mahir lah sebab dah belajar. Awak dah belajar ni lah dengan lagi detail dalam subjek fizik kot tak silap, okay? Fizik ke, chemistry ke, okay? So ini secara secara generalnya lah kita tengok, right? So, no no energy is needed and the process is spontaneous, okay? So, sebenarnya energy tu datang daripada um, pergerakan ion tu sendiri, kan? From high to low. Uh, so, from high to low, the movement from high uh, concentration to low concentration sebenarnya dia adalah uh, yang menyebabkan pergerakan solute tu, kan? Alright? Oh, from from more concentrated uh, from more concentrated region to a less concentrated region so the process is spontaneous does not require energy so the diffusion of water across a selectively permeable membrane from the region of lower solute concentration to a region of higher solute concentration until the solute concentration on both side of the membrane are equal so this one is the explanation for uh, for osmosis uh, so osmosis involve ingat eh osmosis osmosis involve the movement of water molecules only okay um so the movement of this uh, water molecule the definition eh mesti melibatkan movement of water okay uh, across mesti melibatkan across a selectively permeable membrane from a region of lower solute concentration to a region of higher solute concentration kenapa dia guna uh, istilah macam ni 
from a region of sol uh, lower solute concentration because in this region that has lower solute concentration, obviously the region that has lower solute concentration will have more water molecules, okay? More water molecules compared to a region that has higher solute concentration where the presence of water molecule will be lower. Okay, so cara, okay, imagine yes, cara logiknya, I, I, Uh, molekul air itu akan bergerak daripada kawasan yang mana dia lebih banyak kepada kawasan yang mana dia lebih sikit lah. Kawasan yang mana dia lebih banyak tu adalah kawasan yang kita panggil dia sebagai lower solute concentration. Okay. Berbanding dengan kawasan yang ada high solute concentration sebab bilangan air itu lebih sikit. So kita, we are going to look at the next di diagram here. Okay imagine. So ini ini adalah kita fokus kat sini dulu eh dengan gambar rajah ni. Alright, so uh, in this uh, specific region here, okay, so it is separated by a selectively permeable membrane, okay. So this region here, okay, is the region we call it as lower solute concentration. So nak nampak ada satu je solute warna hijau ni. So because the, uh, because in this region, uh, there is less solute, okay, lower solute concentration, obviously the water present, the presence of water molecule will be much more. Okay, you have more water molecule present in this region. Okay, so this is region A, all over there, region A. So compared to region B where you have more solute, okay, we call it as higher solute concentration here. This region here will have higher concentration of solute. So therefore, the, the amount or the number of water molecule will be lesser. Okay, so for osmosis, it involves the movement of water molecule from low solute concentration to high uh, solute concentration, okay? Because in this region where uh, you have more solute, you have less free water molecule. In this region, region A ni, because you have less solute, you have more free water molecules, okay? So the free water molecule will move from region A to region B, from low solute concentration to high solute concentration. Kita guna istilah ni sebagai uh, untuk water ni free. Okay, free water molecules. Okay, free water molecules. So, uh, if you look at this here, the uh, a U tube, okay, a U shape tube, okay. Uh, it is uh, separated by two type of solute, okay, uh, that is separated by uh, a selectively permeable membrane, okay. So, region A label here, you, re, you label region A here, you label region B here, okay. So region A will have lower solute concentration. In this case, the solute used is sugar molecule, okay, sugar molecule. Compared to region B, where you have more solute, okay, more water, more uh, sugar molecule. So this region here is, is, uh, is higher solute concentration. So after you leave the U-shaped tube for a while, okay, For, for a few hours, for example, uh, initially you will find the level of uh, of the solution will be the same. Initial, okay, initial level of the water in both of these arm, okay, of the U-shaped tube ni will be the same, okay. But after you left uh, the, the tube for several hours, you will find that the level will change. The, uh, the, the level of the solution will change, okay. So, uh, So you will find that region A will be lower, okay, the level of the solution will be lower compared to the uh, region B. Sebab apa? Sebab dekat region B initially uh, you have higher concentration of solute and you have less free water molecule. Region A where you have less solute, you have more free water molecule. So the more, the, the free water molecule um, yang lebih banyak sebelah Sebelah A ni akan bergerak daripada region A ke region B. So that's why uh, the level of the solution will, uh, at, uh, at region A will be um, will be lower at the end of the experiment compared to B. Sebab pergerakan air itu akan bergerak daripada low solute to high solute concentration because low solute will have more free water molecule. Ingat tu eh? More free water molecule for osmosis. Okay. So um, Okay, rewind balik yang saya cakap tadi pasal yang tadi kan. Saya tadi saya pause sekejap sebab tadi saya ada tersalah mention. 
for osmosis yeah, for osmosis it does not require uh, aquaporins because it involves simple diffusion yeah so it is erase memory and tadi osmosis uh, is the movement of uh, free water molecule from low solute concentration to high solute concentration okay kalau dia adalah process facilitated diffusion then only water will use aquaporin okay all right uh, so soalan youtube ni kalau awak tengok soalan pasir-pasir banyak juga keluar kan so dia uh, dia akan bagi certain um, instance certain example where dia bagi okay region A ada uh, certain concentration of solid uh, of uh, of glucose region B will have certain uh, concentration of uh, sucrose for example so last kali dia suruh awak determine um, um, apa pergerakan air tu daripada mana ke mana macam itulah kan so yang pentingnya whatever uh, the question whatever form the question comes you must understand the concept okay the concept is that water will move from low solute concentration to high solute concentration because low solute concentration will have more free water molecule okay to move across the membrane so kalau tengok kat sini uh, the the region B that has higher solute concentration bilangan air yang free tu akan lebih sikit sebab apa untuk menyebabkan solute tu dissolve ingat balik um, air tu akan mengelilingi solute tu untuk membentuk apa hydration shell the water of molecules that involve in the formation of hydration shell to make uh, the solute dissolve uh, is not considered as free water molecules but terlibat dalam formation of hydration shell that causes the solute to dissolve okay so uh, so itulah dia okay so water uh, so take note here water moves from an area of higher to lower free uh, ini sebab ini lagi uh, ini uh, ini awak jangan confuse kan tadi cakap uh, tadi cakap uh, low to high kan tapi ini uh, diguna high to low pula so I think boleh punya next sentence tu from okay, higher to lower free okay higher to lower free water uh, concentration okay ataupun in other word low to higher solute concentration low okay to high solute concentration ada dua keadaan yang awak boleh explain dia in terms of water molecule or in terms of solute uh, concentration. Faham tak? Boleh eh? Uh, are you all clear on osmosis punya uh, explanation? Yes. Clear. Okay. Alright. Okay so same uh, same explanation. Uh, sama je. Okay, uh, okay kita go uh, one by one for this slide. Okay so you, you have here selectively permeable membrane. Okay. So it has pores that allows only certain molecule to pass through. In this case, it only pass through. It only allows uh, water to pass through. Solute tak boleh. This stuck kat situ je. Okay. So because the the pores only allows water molecule to uh, to pass through. So water can pass through the pores but sugar molecule cannot due to the large size of the sugar molecule. So sugar cannot pass through. So uh, um, on on side B here, water molecule cluster around sugar molecule in the formation of what? Hydration shell. So this water molecule that involved in the formation of hydration shell is not free. Okay, it's not free. Not free to move. Okay, across the membrane. So side A, side A here, okay, this side here has less or fewer solute, okay, more free water molecule. Okay, molecules, the molecules of water, they uh, will be more and uh, they are free. Okay, they are free to move. Okay, so water molecule for, will move from region A to region B. Okay, so this side has less, uh, sorry, on this side has more solute uh, molecules and uh, fewer free water molecules. So for osmosis, ingat eh, I boleh explain dia dalam segi dua, dua keadaan. Or nak explain dia dari segi concentration of solute ataupun dari segi uh, free water molecule. Kalau awak nak explain dari segi solute, okay, pergerakan air tu melibatkan pergerakan air dari region of higher solute concentration to uh, lower. Okay, higher solute. 
sorry, solute, sorry, um, less, less solute concentration to higher solute concentration. Pergerakan air itu akan melibatkan pergerakan air yang daripada low solute concentration to high solute concentration. So it, itu yang uh, cara pertama awak boleh explain. Cara kedua awak boleh explain dari segi pergerakan air itu uh, bila awak consider the free water molecules tu kan. So from high free water molecules to uh, region to low uh, free water molecules region. Uh, macam tu. Okay. Dua cara. Dari segi solute concentration ataupun free water molecule. Okay. So awak kena guna istilah tu betul-betul lah. So ingat eh jot down, jot down yang ni lah yang pentingnya. Dua cara. Air ataupun solute. Kalau solute from low to high. Kalau free water high to low. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that is uh, for osmosis. You can find a uh, question relating to this uh, apa, this concept uh, in past year ataupun dalam buku workbook I'm not sure if uh, if ada ke tak kejap eh. Saya belik kejap. Tak ada S jam. Objektif ada tak? Tak ada. Tapi awak bolehlah cari contoh soalan yang berkaitan dengan YouTube shape. Uh, apa? U-shape uh, tube ni. Okay. Okay so next we are going to look at uh, some terms. Okay some terms which is uh, tonicity, isotonic, uh, hyper, hypertonic and also hypotonic. Uh, so istilah-istilah ni awak kena tahulah which is uh, kat sekolah pun dah belajar. Okay. Tonicity. Tonicity is the ability of a solution to cause a cell to gain or lose water. Okay. That is tonicity. Kepekatan lah. Kan. Melibatkan kepekatan uh, solution tu. Okay. Tonicity is the ability of a solution to cause cell to gain or lose water. So we have the first type which is isotonic solution. So for isotonic solution, solute concentration is the same, okay, same as that uh, inside of the cell. So no net water movement across the plasma membrane. No net movement tu bukan maksudnya tak ada pergerakan air, maksudnya kadar pergerakan air on both side tu the same, okay. Kadar pergerakan air, uh, the the rate of water uh, movement across the uh, across the plasma membrane will be the same, the rate. So net is zero, okay. Uh, second uh, is hypertonic solution. So solute concentration is greater. It is greater than that inside uh, the cell and uh, causes the cell to lose water. So in this instance, in this case, uh, for example, you place a cell in um, in salt water, okay, in, in saline uh, environment, okay. So, uh, so when you place, uh, especially uh, for animal cell, you place in a really concentrated um, water, okay? Uh, so it causes the cell to lose, to lose water. It causes for animal cell, it can cause the uh, cell to shrink and shrivel, shrivel. Crenate lah, crenation, undergo crenation. Tapi kalau plant cell, the plant cell does not undergo crenation because due to the presence of uh, the, the cell wall, okay? Uh, so for for plant cell, it undergoes plasmolysis. Okay, plasmolysis. Ah, see, plasmolysis. Yang ni lah. Nanti kita tengok lah what is plasmolysis. Okay, so next is hypotonic uh, solution. So, solute concentration is less. Okay, it's less than that uh, inside the cell. So, water gain, uh, water, is, uh, sorry, cells gain water. So, ini awak boleh letak kat uh, solution yang uh, less concentrated, okay, compared to the concentration of cell in concentration uh, of solution in cell, okay. So, so disebabkan air lebih banyak kat luar, so air will diffuse across cell through osmosis and causes the cell to gain water. For animal cell, if you place animal cell in hypotonic solution, and for animal cell, it can cause the cell to burst, okay. But for plant cell, it is it is normal 
it, it is the normal condition for plant cell to for you to place the plant cell in hypotonic solution because uh, plant cell has to be in a turgid turgid condition. Okay, so if you place plant cell in a hypotonic solution, it can it causes the plant cell to be turgid. Okay, but the plant cell will not burst as in the animal cell because due to the presence of the cell wall. Okay. So if uh, we look at this diagram here, you place an animal cell, in this case is red blood cell, in three different kind of solution. Uh, the first one you've placed in the hypotonic solution. Second, you place in isotonic solution. Third, you place in hypertonic solution. So if you look at the, for each one, for each of the red blood cell, for, uh, for hypotonic solution, it causes the cell to swell and lice or burst. Okay, so, uh, placing animal cell in hypotonic uh, solution is not the ideal condition for animal cell. Okay, as animal cell does not have any uh, cell wall. Okay, it, it can cause the cell to burst due to water diffuse. Okay, from the solution into the cell. Okay, diffuse through osmosis. Okay, uh, using osmosis. So water enters the cell faster than it leaves the cell through osmosis. Okay. Pergerakan ni adalah pergerakan. Pergerakan air tu adalah pergerakan osmosis lah. Okay. Um, next, if you place the animal cell in isotonic solution, so this is the normal condition for animal cell. Okay. So animal cell, the rate of diffusion of water into cell is the same as the rate of water diffused out of the cell. So net movement is zero. Okay. Net movement is zero. So that's why we call this as isotonic, same concentration, okay? So, no net movement of water across plasma membrane. Ikatnya, no net movement bukan maksudnya tak ada pergerakan air, tapi pergerakan air keluar masuk adalah pada kadar yang sama, okay? So, water flows across the membrane at the same. Ha, nampak ni, underline eh, no net movement sama dengan same rate of uh, water across the membrane in both direction. Okay. So the volume of an animal cell is stable. So it is iso. Same. So ingat eh, untuk animal cell, this is the normal condition. Okay. It is the normal condition for animal cell is uh, to be in, in, uh, in an isotonic solution. Okay. So for, uh, if, uh, for the third uh, solution is hypertonic. So if you place animal cell in hypertonic solution, so outside is more concentrated. So the water inside cell would diffuse out through osmosis. You can eh, setiap kalau ice cream uh, process ni mesti menggunakan perkataan osmosis tu. So the water will move out of the cell or diffuse out of the cell through osmosis. Okay. And in this case, because water moves out through osmosis, uh, the, the cell will shrink and shriveled, okay, uh, and probably die. So this is, uh, istilah tu kita namakan dia sebagai clinician lah, clinate, okay, shriveled. So example, effects of increasing salinity of uh, of lake, uh, of a lake to an, uh, to animal, okay. So <coughs> if you change the salinity, uh, it may cause the animal, the aquatic environment to not be able to survive lah, okay, uh, because you change the the salt concentration or the solute concentration in that uh, aquatic environment. In this case, is the lake lah. Okay, so for plant cell, okay, so for plant cell is a bit different because uh, for plant cell, they have cell wall, okay. So if you place plant cell in a hypotonic solution, so this is the normal condition for plant. Ingat eh? For plant, hypotonic solution is the normal one because plant has to be turgid. But uh, for uh, animal cell, the normal condition is isotonic. Okay. So plant cell is placed in hypotonic solution. So water enters the cell by osmosis. Ingat ya, setiap kali awak explain pergerakan air tu, mesti awak include perkataan osmosis tu. Alright. By osmosis, the plant cells swell but do not burst. Okay. Due to the presence of cell wall. So the cell become turgid, uh, important for herbaceous plant. So herbaceous plant ni uh, tumbuhan yang tak berkayu lah. Contohnya awak tanam uh, kangkung ke, awak tanam ulam, ulam raja ke kan, pegaga ke. So that is considered as herbaceous, tak ada kayu. So kalau dia tak 
uh, kalau tak siram dia, dia akan layu. Uh, kalau tak bagi dia air, dia akan layu kan. Dia akan layu lah, layu ke tanah. Sebab dia, sebab apa, uh, this plant has to be in a turgid uh, condition, okay. Uh, to support the the plant, okay, to support the structure of the plant. Okay, so next if you were to place the plant in isotonic solution, keadaan sel tu, we call it as flaccid. Okay, we call it as flaccid. Get okay, isotonic, flaccid for plant cell. So in this case, no net movement of water molecule, which is the rate of water molecule diffused into cell is the same as the rate of water diffused out of the cell. Okay, through osmosis. So no change in the cell volume. Keadaan dia uh, tak segah, tak layu macam tu kan. Uh, keadaan ni we call it as flaccid. Okay, so cell become flaccid and will lead to the plant to to wilt later, uh, later lah. And yeah, so plant will wilt, uh, will wilt uh, after that. Alright. Okay, so next is plasmolysis or plasmolysis. So if you look at this diagram here, okay, outside you have the cell wall. Okay, outside you have the cell wall. Inside, inside here, the one uh, that you see shrinking is actually uh, the plasma membrane of the cell. Okay, so if you, uh, the plasma membrane will be attached at certain point to the cell wall. They bukan loose eh. So plasma membrane will uh, will attach at, at, uh, at several points, okay, uh, to the to the cell wall. So if you place the plant cell in hypertonic solution, so the, solu the concentration of a uh, so, uh, solution outside is uh, is greater, okay, so it causes water to diffuse out of the cell. Okay, last kali, the, uh, the, the plasma membrane will shrink away from the from the cell wall. So keadaan ni, we call it as plasmolyse, okay. So uh, uh, as you know, inside the cell, inside the blood cell, you have the vacuole. Okay, so the vacuole is where water will be, uh, water will be stored. Okay, so the vacuole of plant cell is really large. It takes up much um, uh, space inside inside the cell and causes the organelle to push uh, to the peripheral of the cell. But if you place the cell in hypotonic solution the water in the vacuole will diffuse out and causes it to shrink and causes the uh, plasma membrane to pull away from the from the cell okay from the cell wall so the cell shrivel tapi dia tak akan undergo cleanation due to uh, due to the, the presence of cell wall so this phenomena is called as plasmolysis okay causes the plant to wilt okay Okay, so so far, do you have any question before we move on to the next topic, which is uh, any adalah uh, simple diffusion, okay, that does not require any uh, transport protein. So, do you, do you have any question? Not yet. Okay. Okay, so next is uh, facilitated diffusion. Uh, okay, so still, uh, so facilitated diffusion is under passive transport. So this one for facilitated diffusion, it involves the movement of solute across a membrane with the help of transport protein or transmembrane protein or integral protein, protein that are embedded in the plasma membrane. So follows concentration gradient. So what does follows mean? Follows concentration gradient mean from high concentration to low concentration. The, the movement of solute which follows concentration gradient means that it moves from high to low. Okay. So increase the rate of diffusion across cell, uh, cell membrane. Okay. So macam, macam air tadi lah. So ini adalah keadaan yang sesuai untuk saya mention pasal air. Okay. Water molecule okay, can diffuse across the plasma membrane macam kita tengok proses osmosis ni. But if you want to increase the rate of diffusion of water across cell membrane, water has to, um, the movement of the water molecule has to be helped, okay, by transport protein. That's why kita penamakan sebagai facilitated to help the process of diffusion. In order to help the process of diffusion requires transport protein. So for water, it requires the presence of aquaporins, okay. 
So this is to increase the rate of diffusion. Okay. So the the uh, transport protein is very specific. Okay. Uh, so saya dah mention banyak kali, every solute will have their own transport protein to move across the plasma membrane. Okay. On which uh, chemical they allow to pass through. Okay. So kalau aquaporin, air je lah. Tak boleh lah. Glucose ke nak pass through, tak boleh lah. Uh, ion, uh, potassium or calcium to pass through. Okay. So every transport protein will have their own specific solute. Okay. So two types of uh, transport protein. You have here the channel protein. Second, you have the carrier protein. So channel protein will have channel, uh, hydrophilic channel to allow hydrophilic or polar molecule to pass through. Okay. Water polar molecule, for example. Okay. Ions to pass through. So for carrier protein, they have binding site for the solute. So, so the solute bind to uh, bind to the binding site of the protein and causes the protein to change shape. Okay, to change shape, and in this case, the movement of the solute is from high to low. Okay, from high to low because it is facilitated diffusion. Okay. So channel protein. So provide passageways that allows specific molecules or ion to cross the membrane have hydrophilic passageways this one here hydrophilic passageways that allows water molecules or small ion to flow very quickly from one side to uh, of the membrane to the other for example aquaporins and ion channel okay ion channel bergerak untuk gerakan ion lah kan Okay, so for aquaporins, okay, so um, are the water channel proteins facilitate the massive amounts of diffusion of water molecules in plant and animal cell? Without aquaporin, the rate of water movement across the phospholipid bilayer is slow. Contoh yang kita boleh tengok lagi detail nanti adalah bila kita belajar proses uh, Reabsorption in the nephron of kidney. Okay, in the nephrons of kidney. Nephron of kidney, awak belajar dia kan, dia ada uh, distal tubule, dia ada loop of handy, proximal tubule kan, proximal dulu. Kan, proximal, uh, loop of handy, distal, lepas tu uh, collecting ducts. Okay, loop of handy, dekat descending tu akan ada, sel-sel dia akan ada banyak aquaporins. Okay, akan ada banyak aquaporins. So the purpose of uh, the presence of the many aquaporins along the cell of uh, descending limb of loop of handy so that uh, more water molecules will be reabsorbed. Okay, from uh, filtrate into back into your blood. Okay, so fungsi kini adalah untuk tapis darah. Kan, untuk tapis darah. Dalam darah obviously akan ada banyak air. So, bila kini tapis darah tu, darah yang lalu dekat kini along the nephron, air tu kena reabsorb balik daripada nephron masuk ke dalam darah semula. So, that's why nephron tu dekat region loop of Henle akan ada banyak aquaporin. So, that more water molecule, more water will be re reabsorbed from the blood being filtered, okay, uh, uh, back into your blood circulation, okay. So that is the function of aquaporin. So kalau tak ada aquaporin, reabsorption of water will be very low lah kan. So banyaklah air akan tersingkir dalam bentuk formation of uh, of your urine kan. Okay. So that is one uh, example lah uh, kegunaan aquaporin okay. During reabsorption in the kidney okay to reabsorb as much water as possible uh, from the filtrate back into your blood okay. So uh, facilitate uh, facilitate the massive amount of uh, diffusion of water. Ini dah lah kan, okay. So without aquaporin, the rate of water movement across the phospholipid uh, by the year is slow. So consequences, kalau tak ada aquaporin, bila air lalu kidney awak tak, tak ada aquaporin, lambat air akan diffuse masuk balik ke darah. So you will form a very dilute, a very dilute urine and causes you to be dehydrate. Ha, contohnya. Itu contohlah keadaan yang mana tak ada aquaporin. Okay. Alright. Okay so next is uh, ion ion channels. Okay so ion channel or leak channels. So um, leak channels ni sifat dia uh, the feature is that it it is always open. Okay it is always open 
to allow ion to, to diffuse across a membrane from high concentration to low concentration. It is always open. The other one, you have gated channel. Okay, so gated channel can open or close in response to a stimulus. So one of the stimulus can be electrical stimulus. Okay, so gated channel, where can you find gated channel? The most common place uh, where you can uh, find gated channel is along the axon of a neuron. Okay, along uh, the axon of a neuron will have many gated channel that allows ion to move in and out of the cell to generate impulse. Yang ini kita akan lebih tengok in detail during uh, semester 2. Ini ini kita belajar dulu supaya awak tahu dan detail dia kita akan tengok dengan, dengan lebih detail semasa semester 2 uh, dalam chapter nervous system. Okey, uh, yang kita akan tengok untuk untuk neuron lah macam mana impulse terhasil semua tu itu itu dengan lagi detail. Cuma kat sini you have to know for, for ion channel you have leak channels, gated channels so these two channels will play uh, major roles, especially in the neurons, to generate impulse. Okay. So can open or close in response to to a stimulus. So get the channel. For example, if a neuron uh, is going to generate an impulse, it causes the gated channel to open. So when the gated channel opens, it allows uh, sodium ion, okay, to diffuse. Kita guna perkataan diffuse ya, yeah? diffuse uh, uh, across the axon membrane into the into the axon uh, to generate impulse. Okay, Pe impulse ni adalah disebabkan oleh pergerakan ion keluar masuk axon tu, keluar masuk, keluar masuk, keluar masuk axon tu akan menghasilkan electrical charge. Okay, electrical charge. Awak belajar pasal electric kan? Eh, electrical charge tu disebabkan oleh perbezaan uh, potential whatever semua tu sama juga apply kepada awak punya neuron. Okay. Bila ion keluar masuk keluar masuk sel, dia akan menyebabkan uh, uh, penghasilan membrane potential kat situ. Kan? Membrane potential. So, perbezaan charge luar dan dalam sel tu akan menghasilkan electrical impulse. Uh, macam itulah. Okay, so tapi tak apa. Itu kita, kita akan tengok dengan lagi dengan lagi detail lah semester 2 nanti. So, the stimulus can be chemical, ligand or electrical. Change in voltage or mechanical. Kan? So, dia boleh chemical electrical and mechanical. Electrical yang saya cakap tadi along axon of neuron kalau chemical uh, molecule tu kita namakan dia sebagai ligand. Okay ligand contohnya neurotransmitter juga melibatkan uh, neurons lah. Okay, so you have uh, neuron 1, neuron 2. Neuron 1 is going to transfer impulse to neuron 2. Awak kena imagine dalam kepala, dalam kepala awak ni dalam uh, in your mind you have two neurons. Neuron 1, neuron 2. In between, uh, in between this neuron, at the end of neuron 1, tu akan ada uh, synaptic terminal. So gap between tu kita ada synaptic cleft kan? Okay, synaptic cleft. Uh, ingat balik, recall balik. So synaptic cleft. Neuron 1 akan release neurotransmitter, okay, into the synaptic cleft. So this neuron, neurotransmitter ni, we call it as ligand, chemical molecule. Okay, neurotransmitter ni adalah ligand ataupun chemical molecule yang mana dia akan bind kepada uh, a protein okay that is embedded in the uh, dendrite of the second neuron. Dendrite of the second neuron akan ada protein tempat yang mana neuron tu akan bind. So bila neuron, uh, sorry, neurotransmitter, neurotransmitter tu akan bind. So bila neurotransmitter tu bind kepada protein at the dendrite region of the second new, neuron, it causes the, uh, it causes the protein to open and ions to flow into the second neuron to generate uh, to de to generate impulse in the second in the second neuron itu itu mak maksudnya stimulus apa yang menyebabkan gated channel tu terbuka kan gated channel tu terbuka ya eh? okay so for example you have the dendrite. Saya ni tak typical cikgu nak kena draw. Tak draw saya tak buat. Tak boleh. Okay. So ini neuron kan. Neuron 1. Neuron 2. Okay. Okay so yang yang ni adalah cell body right. 
Castle soil body, kat soil body ada dendrite. Okay. Dekat uh, dekat dendrite akan ada protein embedded. Okay. So this protein function as gated channels. Okay. The protein function as gated channel. And also dekat uh, dekat axon kan. Axon pun akan ada gated channel. Ini saya leave out uh, myelin sheet lah. Dekat axon akan ada myelin sheet juga. Okay. Impuls ni kenapa dia boleh menghasilkan, uh, sorry, neuron ni kenapa dia boleh menghasilkan impuls disebabkan oleh pergerakan dua ion. Sodium ion and chloride ion. Chloride negatif. Negatif kan? Eh? Pergerakan ion ni keluar masuk, keluar masuk sel akan generate impuls. Okay. Pergerakan untuk meng, uh, untuk ion ni bergerak keluar masuk, keluar masuk perlukan gated channel. For the movement of uh, sodium and chloride ion in and out of the cell, it uh, we call it as voltage. Voltage. Okay, voltage gated channel. Okay, voltage gated channel for sodium, voltage gated channel for chloride ion. Okay, so bila terhasil je perbezaan electrical charge okay, across the membrane, across the axon, It causes the voltage gated channel to open, sodium move in and impulse will be generated. Ha, macam itulah kan. So impulse akan generate, akan generate, akan generate due to the opening and closing of these two channel. Alright. Bila impulse sudah sampai dekat uh, axon terminal, kan. Axon terminal gap kat sini kita namakan dia sebagai synaptic cleft kan. Okay, synaptic cleft. So macam mana impulse tu nak bergerak daripada neuron 1 ke neuron 2? Okay, dekat Uh, hujung dendrite ni, eh, sorry, uh, hujung uh, axon terminal akan ada vesikel-vesikel uh, yang tersimpannya neurotransmitter. Okay, so this neurotransmitter will be released okay, from neuron 1 to neuron to, to synaptic cleft. Okay, so this is neurotransmitter. So this neurotransmitter will bind to the uh, to the gated channel located at the dendrite of this uh, of neuron 2. Ini kita namakan dia sebagai ligand lah chemical, Chem, uh, chemically gated uh, channel. Okay, chemically gated channel at the dendrite ni. So bila, neuro, uh, bila neurotransmitter bind kepada uh, chemically gated uh, channel, it causes the channel to open and ion, sodium chloride and also sodium ion and also chloride ion boleh masuklah kepada sel 2 untuk generate the next impulse. Okay, in in, in cell in neuron 2. Macam itulah kan. Itu maksudnya gated channel ni. Dia hanya akan terbuka oleh disebabkan oleh faktor-faktor satu kehadiran chemical molecule. In this case is neurotransmitter, electrical, uh, pergerakan ions dan juga mechanical disebabkan oleh pressure yang dikenakan oleh uh, dikenakan ke atas sel tu. Ha, contohnya. Okay. So itu itu adalah uh, uh, instance okay, uh, where you can find gated channel. Kalau leak channels ni can also be found okay, along the axon but uh, this leak, leak channels ni does not contribute to the generation of impulse. They, they can always open. Okay, it, it, it always open to allow ion to move in and out of the cell according uh, per down concentration gradient. Uh, yang tu, yang tu uh, just syarat dia awak kena ingat open je. Cara dia berfungsi uh, semester 2. Okay. Okay, so if you look at here for ion channels, so we have non-gated or leak ion channel always open. They always open. Okay, this sentiasa terbuka. In this case, oh in this case dia tak ada. Dalam diagram ni tak ada illustrate. Okay. Tak ada illustration for gated channel. Cuma, awak kena tahu it always open. So always open. Okay. It always open. Jap. Always open and responsible for permeability. Specific one, specific for one type of ions, although not absolute. Okay. So usually it is specific for 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 certain for certain ions. Second is gated ion channel. Okay. We have two type ligand gated ataupun chemically gated. Okay. 
ligand gated or chemically gated channel open or closed in response to ligand binding to receptors such as ACH ni ACH ni acetylcholine okay acetylcholine is a uh, is a type of neurotransmitter second you have a uh, voltage gated channel okay one uh, of the place that you can find voltage gated channel is along the axon of neuron so when uh, this voltage gated channel can open or close in response to small voltage change okay uh, especially for example in the generation of impulse across uh, across the axon okay so nampak eh so uh, impulse hanya akan terhasil bila ada berlaku perbezaan charge luar dan dalam sel tu dalam keadaan normal okey dalam keadaan yang normal semua sel ni luar bercharge positif dalam negatif tapi bila sel tu dia nak menghasilkan impuls dia kena tukar dalam positif luar negatif ha, macam itulah kan so bila berlaku perubahan charge luar dan dalam membrane ni akan menghasilkan voltage across membrane ha, macam tu okey alright so uh, next uh, genetic uh, genetic disease okey channel protein a type of gen okay a type of genetic disease that is related to dysfunction of channel protein which is cystic fibrosis okay cystic fibrosis is a type of genetic disease caused by dysfunction of channel proteins okay characterized by the production of abnormally thick sticky mucus and mostly affecting the respiratory airways okay so this is due to mutation caused by defective uh, chloride ion channel okay chloride ion channel dia tak boleh berfungsi dengan sepatutnya okay defective all right so the chloride ion transport across membrane closely linked to uh, sodium ion transport kan so chloride ion dengan uh, dengan sodium ion ni dia saling relate dia saling relate to one another okay especially macam saya uh, cakap tadi lah kan uh, macam generation of impulse dekat dalam neuron tu melibatkan Sekejap, uh, impulse, impulse bukan melibatkan chloride, sorry. Dia melibatkan sodium and also, sodium and also potassium, sorry eh. Sodium and potassium. Tapi ini melibatkan the movement of chloride ion and uh, sodium ion. So, cell lining the respiratory tract, respiratory tract cannot absorb chloride ion. Sorry, uh, sodium chloride. Cannot absorb sodium chloride. So, sodium chloride accumulates affecting the natural defensive protein which is, which is called defensin that that kill bacteria in the lung okay so bacteria triggers airways uh, or cell lining the, re lining the respiratory tract to produce excess abnormal uh, sticky uh, thick and sticky mucus so this the presence of this mucus will clog the airways and causes lung damage and causes respiratory failure so cystic, cystic fibrosis ni disebabkan oleh ni je defective chloride ion channel yang menyebabkan uh, lining of respiratory tract tak boleh nak absorb chloride, sodium chloride. Okay, sodium chloride yang akan affect ni lah defensive protein, uh, defensive against bacteria in the lung. So, so bila kat ni berlaku, bacteria boleh masuk terus lah ke dalam uh, apa, the, the presence of bacteria uh, akan menyebabkan the the respiratory tract will produce excessive mucus sebab banyaknya bakteria kat situ menghasilkan banyaknya mucus kan banyaknya mucus sebab dah tak ada dah defensive protein ni kan defensive defensive protein ni dah tak boleh nak dihasilkan dengan secara normal okey sebab sodium chloride accumulates in the respiratory tract okey so that is cystic cystic fibrosis so this is uh, uh, an illustration okay, to explain on uh, cystic fibrosis lah kan. So, so the respiratory tract okay, will, uh, will produce excessive mucus because cannot absorb sodium chloride. So sodium chloride accumulate, defensive protein cannot be produced. So bacteria will cause excessive amount of mucus to be formed. So this mucus will cause the the alveolus to be um, loaded with excessive mucus lah kan so mucus blocks the alveoli in the lung okay so this can cause lung failure lah
Okay, so uh, boleh berlaku juga uh, dekat pancreas. Okay. Okay, so next is uh, carrier protein. Dia boleh, uh, kita kita break sekejap, lima minit. Uh, kita sambung sekejap lagi. Okay, kita uh, break dua minit lah. Okay, we take a break uh, for, for two minutes. Okay, so uh, continue. Okay, so next uh, tadi kita dah tengok pasal channel protein. Okay, so channel protein ada tadi um, li, macam contoh ni liat channel dan juga uh, get the channel kan. Okay, so now we are going to look at carrier protein. So carrier protein uh, says here some small hydrophilic organic molecules. Okay, nak keluarkan dia punya laser. Okay. Uh, carrier protein. So some small hydrophilic organic molecules such as glucose and also amino acids. Okay, so these are molecules that, that is small in size because they are monomer but they are also polar molecules. Okay, hydrophilic polar molecules. So in order to move this sort of solute across the membrane requires carrier protein. Okay, it requires carrier protein. So to pass through the cell membrane by means of facilitated diffusion. Oh, okay. So glucose pun Okay, so in this case, glukos boleh bergerak melalui sel tu dengan dua cara. Aktif dan juga pasif transport eh. Aktif and also pasif transport. So, change, um, <coughs> so uh, due to facilitated diffusion because it uses carrier protein. So, this carrier protein will have binding site for the glucose to bind to. So, when the glucose or other solute such as amino acid binds to the binding site, it causes the carrier protein to change shape. So change shape ni, the uh, you writing this uh, um, point kan, is really crucial. So ini adalah salah satu key point untuk dapat marka in your explanation for uh, how how carrier protein function, okay? In, in uh, facilitated diffusion or active transport. So in this case, it's facilitated diffusion lah. So change in, uh, change in shape can be triggered 
by the binding of solute to the binding site. So this is the binding site, okay, of uh, uh, of the solute, for the solute of the carrier protein and release the transported molecule with no energy input required. Okay, tak perlu energy in the form of ATP, for example. Okay, so uh, example, the glucose, co uh, sorry, the glucose transporter. Okay, glucose transporter is referring to this protein molecule that function as carrier protein to transport glucose. Ada, ada istilah nak tengok transporter, ada ER kat, kat, kat belakang kan? It is referring to carrier protein that function to transport glucose. Okay. So glucose will bind to this uh, glucose transporter to its binding site. Okay. Uh, and then uh, causes the protein to change shape and glucose molecule released into the cell. Okay. Released into the, uh, the cell. So as you can see, because it is, uh, it involves uh, facilitated diffusion, the movement will be from high concentration to low concentration. Okay. So uh, another example of genetic disease, okay, inherited disease, genetic disease is the same, okay, which is cystinuria. So uh, cystinuria is caused by too much amino acid cysteine. Okay, you have uh, the 20 different type of amino acid. So in this case, the one that uh, involving cystinuria, it involves amino acid cysteine and also lysine and arginine. Okay, lysine, LYS to lysine. ARG to uh, arginine. So uh, in the in the urine, too much too much of these three amino acid in the urine. The normal condition for urine formation by the kidney should not contain any protein. Okay, your urine should not contain any protein. So if your urine contains protein, it means that there's something wrong with your kidney. Okay, so kidney sepatutnya dia akan tapis darah dan darah Awak tu akan ada banyak komponen. One of the component is protein, amino acid also. Okay, so if uh, if if blood okay were to be filtered by the kidney, and your kidney produces uh, urine that contains protein, amino acid, so that's mean your kidney is um, will have uh, is 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 in uh, in problem lah. So you have kidney problem. Okay, so normally after entering the kidney, cysteine dissolves and goes back into the bloodstream. So kidney has to has to re-enter back into your blood, has to be reabsorbed back into your blood. Okay, so in people with cystinuria, the carrier protein that transports cysteine across the membrane of the kidney cells are defective or missing. Okay, it means that in the kidney akan ada banyak nephron kan? So nephron ni akan ada banyak channel protein. One of the channel protein is, uh, sorry, can channel protein, carrier protein. One of the function of the uh, carrier protein is to transport cysteine from filtrate back into the into the blood. So, uh, as as a result, cysteine accumulates in the urine and from and from crystals, okay, or stones, batu karang lah, which may block the kidney, ureter, and also bladder. Okay, uh, so think on. Eh? Sikit je, sikit je dysfunction dia which is uh, carrier protein untuk transport system tu tak boleh nak berfungsi terus menyebabkan uh, boleh terhasilnya batu karang dekat, dekat dalam kidney tu. Okay so so that is um, apa uh, one of the significance of uh, of the carrier protein. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, what happened. Uh, so imagine, so this is kidney, kan? Kidney, dalam kidney tu will have so many nephrons. Okay, so many nephrons. So these are the nef uh, nephrons inside the kidney. So the function of the kidney is to filter the blood and uh, lead to the formation of 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 urine. So when when um, filtrate passes through the nephrons, okay, um, initially. After the filtrate passes through the Bowman capsule, you are going to think about it lah. Structure nephron can uh, filtrate akan masuk dulu ke Bowman capsule and then to the uh, uh, next tubule. So this tubule will cause uh, molecules such as glucose, amino acids, uh, water, ions to be reabsorbed back into your blood. Bila um, this carrier protein is dysfunction amino acid cannot be reabsorbed back and end up 
in your filtrate later to form your urine. So daripada filtrate ni, um, dia akan pergi, dia akan, daripada kidney dia akan pergi ke ureter, ureter into your kidney, uh, bladder, uh, sorry, uh, urinary bladder. Okay, urinary bladder. So these stones that contains the amino acid will, uh, will, will block, okay, will block the ureter, uh, the, the bladder. So it, this, this can uh, cause pain lah kat situ, right? Okay, so itu adalah uh, contoh cystinuria, okay? Okay, so last, uh, okay, summative question. So this one you answer in your own time. So what happened to an animal cell when immersed in the following solution? Hypotonic solution, hypotonic solution and uh, the next question is name two type of ion channels, okay? Tak ada tadi um, uh, leak ion channel and gated channel, chemically gated channel and also uh, voltage gated channel. Uh, so uh, saya ada bagi dah kat situ. So nombor suruh dua, dia bagi soalan last dia bagi nombor satu S2 which is describe simple diffusion. So nombor satu, nombor dua ni awak boleh terangkan baliklah berdasarkan uh, diagram yang kita tengok awal-awal tadi tu. Alright. Okay so next is on active transport. Okay so so far ada soalan tak? Saya ni pergi masa ke tapi sebab saya nak try to habiskan uh, chapter ni. Hari Kamis kita cuti. Do you have any question? No. So far boleh eh? Faham eh? Faham. Okay so thank you. Saya harap uh, saya harap semua faham. Okay. Okay so uh, the next subtopic is uh, active transport. Okay. So active transport is the movement of ions or molecules across cell membrane aided by transport protein against uh, the uh, concentration gradient. Against means from low concentration to high concentration. So this one uh, for active transport it only uses carrier protein saja tak melibatkan channel protein. Carrier protein only. So requires energy expenditure uh, provided by ATP. Okay. So cells that carry out active transport have high respiratory rate and have large number of mitochondria. So as you know the function of mitochondria is uh, to undergo cellular respiration to produce ATP energy in the form of ATP. So obviously for ATP transport it's disebabkan uh, menggunakan banyaknya ATP kena ada dalam cell tu banyaknya mitochondria. Okay so therefore disebabkan oleh banyaknya mitochondria so the cell uh, will have high respiratory rate. Okay. Okay, so enables the cell to maintain internal concentration of small solute that differ from concentration in its environment. Okay, so internal concentration of solute will be different, okay, from the outside uh, solution. Okay. Okay, so uh, for, um, okay, so the next subtopic under active transport is electrogenic pump. Okay, bila kita jumpa perkataan pump ni, Dia adalah sebenarnya transport protein which is the carrier protein. Pump ni adalah transport protein eh which is the carrier protein specifically to move ions okay across membrane. Electrogenic pump. Dia sebab apa saya cakap dia melibatkan ion sebab dia melibatkan ion ni dia ada charge yang positive, positive charge and negative charge. Bila ion ni bergerak across membrane menggunakan pump dia akan menyebabkan voltage dah sel across membrane. So that's why we call it as electrogenic pump, okay? A transport protein that generates voltage across membrane. It only involves a uh, carrier protein that transport ions, ions, eh? So membrane, uh, membrane potential uh, is a voltage across a membrane, okay? Voltage is created by differences in the distribution of positive and negative ion across membrane. For example, Sodium potassium pump in animal cell and proton pump in plant cell, fungi and also bacteria. Ingat, sodium potassium uh, sodium potassium pump is will only be found in animal cell. Okay, proton pump in plant cell, fungi and also bacteria. Dalam keadaan normal, um, normal cell, cell, nucleus, 
uh, sel dalam keadaan yang normal dalam dia kena bercas negatif luar positif okey ini yang kita namakan sebagai membran potential kan ada perbezaan charge luar dengan dalam sel membran potential okey voltage across membrane so bila dia melibatkan uh, sodium potassium pump kan so the sodium and potassium move, move in and out of the cell it causes this charge ion to move in and out so charge tu boleh berubah ha, contohnya kan ha, charge tu boleh berubah dan menghasilkan voltage across membrane lah generate okay generate voltage across membrane the presence of this pump sodium potassium pump and also proton pump okay so example of voltage uh, sorry uh, electrogenic pump yang the first one is sodium potassium pump okay so X, uh, this for this pump it involves the exchange or the movement of sodium ion and potassium ion across plasma membrane k plus of potassium right okay so pumps three sodium out for ev uh, out of the cell for every two potassium into the cell yang ni awak kena ingat wajib hafal okay sodium potassium pump pumps out three potassium uh, three sodium so sodium tiga kat dalam dan dia akan pump keluar. Okey, pump keluar. Potassium dua masuk. Okey. So initially if you look at this diagram, alright. The extracellular fluid, okay here, the concentration of sodium ion is high. Okey. Compared to the concentration of sodium ion inside cell is low. So tengok eh, pergerakan dia from low to high. The movement of sodium ion from low to high is from Uh, is active transport then from low concentration to high concentration so to move the sodium ion okay from inside to outside of the cell requires energy in the form of ATP so initially in the cytoplasmic side sodium ion will bind to the binding side of the uh, of the uh, carrier protein okay so sodium bind tiga sodium bind daripada dalam cell ni okay Once the sodium bind, what happens next is that an ATP molecule will release one of its uh, phosphate group, okay, and this phosphate group will bind to the carrier protein. We call this as phosphorylation, okay, phosphorylation. Sodium binding stimulate phosphorylation by ATP. Phosphorylation of what? Phosphorylation of this pump protein, phosphorylate, okay. So ATP The E stands for what? Adenosine triphosphate. So triphosphate, tiga phosphate. So satu phosphate release bind kepada protein. So now it becomes ADP. Adenosine diphosphate. Daripada tiga jadi dua. Kan tiga ATP jadi dua ATP. Okay so, so you form uh, ADP. Okay so now when the protein has been phosphorylated kan it causes the protein to change shape. Nampak eh? Phosphorylation causes the protein to change shape. Uh, to change its shape or change its conformation. Awak boleh guna dua. Mana yang senang nak gunalah. Change conformation or change shape. Sama je. Okay. So once the protein changes shape, orang oh, tengok ya, initially um, the binding site facing the cytoplasm. Now when the uh, protein changes shape, the binding site facing extracellular fluid. Okay. So when the protein changes shape, so now the binding site of the sodium now does not complement or does not fit the sodium ion so now the sodium ion will be released into the extracellular fluid so initially binding site dia besar so dia boleh muat tapi bila uh, protein tu change shape binding site will, will shrink for example and causes the sodium ion to be released outside of the cell okay so when when uh, the protein is in this conformation kan in this conformation yang nombor tiga ni It is, uh, it has the binding site that suits the shape of the so, uh, of the potassium ion. So now potassium ion from outside uh, will bind to the binding site of the pump. Okay, ingat, tengok ayah kat sini. Potassium ion outside concentration of it is low. Any low kat sini. Alright. So the movement involves the movement of potassium from outside to inside of the cell. From low concentration to high potassium concentration. 
okay low concentration to high concentration outside into cell okay so when the potassium binds to the binding site of the protein it causes the phosphate yang tadi tu melekat okay untuk tercabut ini proses ni kita namakan dia sebagai uh, dephosphorylation okay dephosphorylation so phosphate will be removed okay or released from the from the uh, from the protein okay from the carrier protein so extracellular uh, potassium binds to the protein triggering release of the phosphate group okay so when the phosphate is released once again the protein will change shape okay the loss of the phosphate restores the protein to its original shape or conformation hopefully guna dua-dua istilah conformation shape is the same okay so um so once the uh, phosphate release and protein is restored to its original conformation nampak original conformation ni macam ni lah keadaan dia kan so the potassium ion will be released into the cell so syarat dia awak kena tengoklah kat situ yang paling penting dan yang paling penting awak kena tahu okey ini adalah extra cellular free ini adalah cytoplasmic site okey so yang syarat yang kena tahu untuk sodium potassium pump Sodium outside concentration of it is low. Dia, dia akan, sorry, uh, is high kan. Sodium inside is low. So pergerakan dia adalah daripada luar, sorry, sorry, daripada dalam ke luar kan. Tiga sodium from inside move to the outside using active transport. Okay, kalau yang potassium pula, Potassium outside the concentration is low, inside the concentration is high. Okay, so the movement of potassium will be to potassium from outside into the cell using, okay, using sodium potassium pump, using energy in the form of ATP. Okay, that involves the protein to change shape due to phosphorylation of the protein by ATP. Okay. Okay, so next. Okay, so so far untuk sodium potassium pump, I hope you understand. If you don't, uh, after this you can ask, okay. Okay, so next is uh, proton pump, okay. So proton pump, uh, this one you find proton pump in plant, okay, plant cell, fungi, bacteria, okay. So for this proton pump, nombor pun proton melibatkan pergerakan hydrogen ion, okay, or protons, actively transport uh, so, uh, hydrogen ions, okay, or proton out of the cell, okay, out of the cell. So it means that the concentration of hydrogen ion inside cell will be low. Concentration of hydrogen ion outside of the cell will be high. Pergerakan daripada low ke high. Active transport requires energy in the form of ATP. So that's why we call it as proton, proton pump. Okay, pump is the protein, okay. So a pump that translocate positive ion, okay, charge, positive charge in the form of hydrogen ion. So the voltage and the hydrogen ion gradient, we call it as the electrochemical gradient eh. Electrochemical gradient. Electro disebabkan oleh adanya perbezaan charge luar dengan dalam. Can voltage across membrane. Chemical gradient. Chemical in this case is the hydrogen ion lah. Okay. Present, present, represent a dual energy source that can drive other processes such as the uptake of nutrients. Up, okay, ayat ni dia nak, dia nak bagi tahu proton pump ni is significant okay, is significant uh, uh, in the process of uh, transporting other nutrients from outside into cell. Okay, from outside into cell. Outside cell, okay, dia melibatkan plan cell kan? So plan cell as you know it involves uh, the cell the cell to produce glucose. Can plant cell through, uh, through photosynthesis produces glucose. Okay, glucose. So inside cell, the concentration of glucose is high. Okay, tapi glucose yang terhasil dalam photosynthesis, for example, has to be transported to other parts of the plant, kan? They can store in the, in the fruits, okay? They be transported to other parts of the plant, okay? So, macam mana? Glukos yang dalam sel yang banyak ini dibawa keluar ke dalam keluar sel yang mana glukos concentration is low. Okay, using 
indirect energy from ATP that is mediated by proton pump. Kita kita tengok uh, uh, example dia adalah kita uh, kegunaan or significant of transport pro, uh, uh, proton pump ni adalah dalam co transport. The significant saya ulang eh the significant of proton pump in plant cell okay is in uh, the process we call it as co transport. Okay co transport. What is co transport? Co transport is the coupled transport of chemical substance across a cell membrane in which the energy required to move a substance against uh, its concentration gradient or uh, electrical potential is provided by the movement of another substance along its gradient. Okay, dia punya definition ayat dia panjang, susah nak faham, kita tengok contoh. For example, plant cell uses hydrogen ion or proton gradient generated by uh, by proton ATP powered proton pump to drive the active transport of amino acid sugar and several nutrients into into cell so this protein can transport sucrose into cell only if the molecule travels uh, in the uh, in the company of hydrogen hydrogen ion so kita tengok figure dia kat sini melibatkan contohnya uh, proton Proton sucrose co-transporter. Kenapa kita panggil dia sebagai co-transporter? Sebab dia melibatkan dua transport protein kat sini. Okay. First is the proton pump. Second, um, okay, second is uh, proton sucrose co-transporter. Okay. Proton sucrose co-transporter. Okay. Proton sucrose co-transporter uses the, it says here, uses the, the diffusion of hydrogen ion down its electrochemical gradient into the cell to drive the uptake of sucrose into cell uh, cell against concentration gradient. Okay, so function to transport, plant, uh, transport implant to load sucrose produced by photosynthesis into cells in the veins of leaf. Okay. Dalam istilah co-transport, maksudnya dia be, uh, dua, dua jenis protein bekerja sama. Okay, bekerja sama. Protein yang pertama adalah proton pump. Okay. So proton pump ni dalam sel concentration of hydrogen ion proton is low. Dia kena bawa keep on bawa keluar. Bawa keluar, bawa keluar daripada dalam sel keluar sel. Ke dalam extra cellular fluid. Okay. Ke dalam extra cellular fluid. So pergerakan hydrogen ion ni mesti melalui proton pump menggunakan tenaga daripada ATP. Okay. Sebab apa pergerakan hidrogen ion ni daripada low concentration to high concentration. Apa tujuan proton pump ni? Tujuan proton pump ni adalah untuk accumulate. Okay, accumulate as much hydrogen ion as possible outside of the cell. Okay, which is in the extracellular fluid. Okay, so itu proton, uh, itu pump yang pertama. Pump yang kedua adalah yang ni. Hydrogen ion sucrose co-transporter. The second transport protein here which is dia ada dua binding site. Binding site untuk hydrogen ion, binding site untuk nutrien yang, yang, yang dia nak bawa masuk. Kan? Plant cell. Okay. Plant cell. Um, fungsi dia ada uh, cell is to store is to store for example um, apa glucose produced in the leaf can uh, store in the in the other structures such as fruit for example ini contohnya cell in the fruits uh, for example fruits ataupun in the tubers okay so this plant cell has to store the sucrose produced by the leaf through the process of photosynthesis so dia kena bawa masuk sucrose tu okay Buah manis kan? Okay. So dia kena simpan sucrose tu dalam sel dengan banyaknya. Okay so it means that this sucrose inside the cell is high. Okay. So because dia nak store this plant cell, the fruit cell ni nak store as much as sucrose as possible. So pergerakan sucrose tu adalah daripada low concentration to high concentration. Okay sebab dia nak store. Plant cell ni is to store, is to accumulate sucrose. So in order to store the sucrose inside cell, yang adalah dengan bantuan hidrogen ion. 
okay, hidrogen ion yang awak dah bawa keluar dengan banyaknya menggunakan proton pump tu tadi. Okay, awak guna proton pump untuk bawa, untuk keluarkan sebanyak mungkin hidrogen ion ke dalam extracellular fluid. So bila dah banyak hidrogen ion dalam extracellular fluid tu tadi, so hidrogen ion ni, this hidrogen ion, okay, will uh, go in, back into the cell, okay, serentak, okay, serentak dengan sukros. Okay, sukros daripada luasan masuk ke dalam serentak. Pergerakan tu adalah serentak. So the, the movement of sucrose as you can see here, it is actually active transport. Okay, active transport because it involves sucrose to move from low to high concentration. Okay, tapi awak tengok, awak notice kat sini, untuk hydrogen ion co-transporter ni, walaupun dia melibatkan sucrose bergerak daripada low to high concentration, tapi dia tak menggunakan ATP. Faham tak? Dia tak menggunakan ATP tapi dia gunakan apa? Dia gunakan Uh, concentration gradient of the hydrogen ion. Okay. Kita nampakkan sebagai electrochemical gradient tu. Dia akan uh, the process of uh, moving sucrose from outside into the cell from low concentration to high concentration. It uses the high concentration of a hydrogen ion to move back into the cell using this co-transporter. So indirectly Okay, indirectly, the process of moving sucrose from outside into cell indirectly uses ATP. But it actually, uh, the process is actually active transport walaupun secara indirectly menggunakan ATP energy. Okay, ini apa yang menggerakkan, apa yang menggerakkan sucrose tu masuk ke dalam cell daripada low to high disebabkan oleh ni. The change in uh, chemical, sorry, voltage ni kan maksudnya dekat luar ni pergerakan ion ni daripada high ke low ni dia akan pose a kind of uh, uh, membrane potential kan uh, membrane potential pergerakan hidrogen ion daripada luar ke dalam okay membantu sucrose masuk ke dalam sel uh, macam tu daripada low ke high concentration of sucrose. So function of co-transport implant is to load sucrose produced by photosynthesis into cell uh, in the veins of leaf. Okay. Ha. So itulah contoh dia. Faham ke? Boleh faham tak? Ya. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, it is now 11.55. Kita habiskan sikit. You all ada kelas tak pukul 12? Habiskan kau transport ni sikit. Okay. So uh, sucrose, sorry sodium tadi example tadi adalah untuk uh, plant cell. Okay. Hydrogen. Okay ini lagi satu istilah yang awak kena take note. For example if in the uh, if uh, if the question ask you um, apa um, to name uh, this this code transport <coughs> dalam biology we take it seriously that you use the right term yeah you use the right the right term if you were to write for example uh, hydrogen ion sucrose code transport dia jadi salah sebab apa code transport adalah proses co-transporter is the name for the protein tu. Okay. And the other one is that uh, when you are writing the name, you always put the ion first. Okay. Hydrogen ion, sucrose, co-transporter. If you were to write sucrose, hydrogen ion, co-transporter, you write first the sucrose and then later hydrogen ion, your answer will be wrong. Okay. Uh, so dalam bio, kita api is, penggunaan istilah ni sangat serius eh. Walaupun injaan. Uh, Ezaan kalau salah, salah. Okay. Ezaan yang tapi tak adalah sezalim macam tu. Kalau Ezaan salah tapi ada still bunyi sikit salah salah satu dua huruf boleh diterima. Tapi bila Ezaan uh, melibatkan pronunciation dia lari, dia akan jadi salah. Okay. Ha. <coughs> okay. Mm, okay, so the next uh, type of co-transporter is uh, in animal cell. 
okay, in, uh, in human for example, okay, sodium glucose co-transporter. So co-transporter again, I remind you, uh, dia melibatkan dua jenis uh, proton, proton pump, okay, pro, uh, transport uh, protein yang melibatkan satu pergerakan the ion first, okay, the ion first and then uh, the solute, the solute and the ion together. Ion first and then the solute and the ion together. That's why we call it as co-transporter. So in this case, patient drinks solution, high concentration of glucose and salt in treatment for dehydration resulting from diarrhea. Awak cari berit, awak kehilangan banyak air. So awak pergi jumpa doktor, doktor bagi air garam. Okay, air garam. So in that uh, air garam tu, I can ada banyak glucose and salt. So it involves uh, it involves co-transport protein, osmosis and water balance in animal cell. So in that uh, salt water tu, given by your doctor tu, it contains glucose and also sodium ion. Okay. So these glucose and sodium ions are taken up by the carrier proteins on the surface of epithelial cells that line the intestine. Okay. So dia melibatkan sel pada intestine lah. Sebab awak, awak, awak diarrhea melibatkan banyak air hilang. Okay, uh, so banyak air hilang. So one of the function of the intestine is to reabsorb back water. Okay, back, uh, reabsorb back water into your into your body. Okay, so bila awak keracunan makanan, this um, um, apa protein channels, okay, aquaporin that is supposed to cause water to be reabsorbed back into your blood, okay, uh, daripada Makanan yang awak makan yang dah disenangkan, so air air ini akan reabsorb back into your into your blood. Tapi bila awak keracunan makanan, poison from this bacteria will block this aquaporins. Okay, will block this aquaporin dan menyebabkan air tak boleh nak di reabsorb keluar dalam bentuk uh, cherry berry lah, kan cherry berry itu. Okay, so bila bila awak mak, uh, minum air uh, air salt ni akan ada banyak glucose and sodium ion. Okay, so Passes through the cell uh, into the blood, blood solute concentration increase, water from the lumen of intestine, intestinal blood and into the, and back into the blood, sorry. Water from the lumen of intestine, intestinal cell and back into the blood. So kalau kita tengok contohnya kat sini, okay. Saya bagi contoh ya. Eh? Saya draw. So this is cell of intestine. Okay. Ini adalah lumen intestine tu. Ini lumen intestine. Awak punya intestine kan? So ada banyak villus. Alright. So awak diary, uh, sel, sel dekat dekat villus ni akan akan ada banyak uh, aquaporins ni. Dan aquaporins. Akan akan ada banyak aquaporins. So dalam keadaan yang normal, makanan yang awak makan tu, okay, um, will be digested. Uh, it moves down your intestine. And at the same time, water will be reabsorbed back into your blood, uh, into your blood, uh, using that aquaporin. But when you have um, uh, diarrhea, can this about the question of makanan, whatever, semua tu, this aquaporin will be blocked by poison from that bacteria, toxin, okay, toxin from the bacteria. So they can block. So that's why you will flush out excessive amount of water, okay. <clears throat> Untuk mengatasi masalah tu. You drink this uh, salt solution, okay? After you drink this salt solution, <coughs> akan akan ada uh, this sodium ion glucose co-transporter, okay? Sodium ion um, glucose co uh, co-transporter. So the function of this glucose ion uh, glucose ion sodium glucose ion co-transporter is to transport, okay? Or dah minum air, ada banyak sodium and glucose, okay? So when there is a high concentration of hydrogen, uh, sorry, of of sodium ion, okay, in the, in the lumen of the intestine, it will move together with the glucose, okay, into the cell of the intestine, okay, and then uh, it causes it causes the the concentration of the blood to increase. Glucose ni akan keluar daripada cell of intestine into your blood. Okay, into your blood. Same goes to the sodium ion. Okay, so your blood, your blood uh, concentration will increase. Blood concentration increase. Sebab apa? Banyak glucose di, di, uh, diserap. 
diserap semula. Ion diserap semula. So blood glucose concentration will increase. When your blood concentration uh, uh, solute increase, air boleh diserap balik masuk. Okay, air boleh diserap balik masuk. Instead of dia keluar, jadi diarrhea, so dia akan boleh uh, sedaya upaya untuk serap balik semula air. Okay, back into your, into your blood. Uh, itu itu uh, adalah treatment untuk diarrhea lah. Okay, faham? So, that is cold transport. So, you have to know kenapa kita panggil dia sebagai cold transport. Dia melibatkan transport protein that transport both ions and solute at the same time against concentration gradient. Okay, so kalau kat human, uh, sama again. So, dia ion glucose co-transporter. If you were to write glucose dulu, kan baru sodium ion tu jadi salah. Okay, uh, so make sure you write the ion first and then the solute and then the protein. Okay, co-transporter. So I guess, okay, for the rest of the slide ni, which is on like transport, kita stop dulu, ada lagi about, uh, about 12, 12 slides, okay, kita, we will continue uh, next week, next week lah kot, okay, ataupun saya buat kelas ganti. So do you have any question? Kita, uh, we stop for now. If you have question, you can ask. If not, uh, that's the end of uh, our session today.